Hi, it's Brother Bob again. Thank you for joining the virtual tour of our Bloomfield Meeting House. You may be interested to know that there are over 30,000 Latter-day Saint congregations worldwide with less than half of them within the United States. With nearly 17 million members, this is the fourth largest Christian denomination in the United States and in the world. There are many false, misleading, and shall we say caricature teachings about our faith. For example, Latter-day Saints have been referred to as Mormon for nearly 200 years. To avoid arguments, and worse, we embrace the nickname for a very long time. The word Mormon, of course, comes from the name of one of our sacred records. However, as a label for our church and our people, it began as an epithet and a pejorative. There are also splinter groups referred to as Mormon that separated from the main body of the church over 100 years ago to follow other leaders and the practice of polygamy. We are not offended by the use of the nickname Mormon. However, because it began as a pejorative, says little about who we are or who we worship, and so as not to be confused with polygamous splinter groups, we much prefer to be referred to as members of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or simply Latter-day Saints. The name, The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, was given by revelation through our founding prophet, Joseph Smith, Jr. The word of the Lord is also recorded in the Book of Mormon as, quote, how be it my church, save it be called in my name, end quote. Though there are many definitions of the word saint that can be derived from reading the Bible, it is clear to me that any definition should begin with the idea that saints are sinners who are still trying to be better and do better. Certainly you can tell from this video that Latter-day Saints are not perfect. However, we have always welcomed as members, people of all races and ethnicities. As a matter of fact, one of the causes of persecution against us in the 1830s was explicitly because we allowed blacks to freely worship side by side with whites in our services. While along with many other Christian churches of pre-Civil War America, to better maintain peace within communities, we did curtail ordination of those of African descent around 1850. That restriction was lifted decades ago. You might be interested to know that the church has never recorded the race of its members on its records. We begin this tour in our chapel area. You will notice our worship services are conducted in a plainly decorated room. Unlike most Christian churches, you will not see images such as the Christian cross in Latter-day Saint chapels. While we believe in the divinity of Jesus Christ and respect and appreciate the sacred nature the image of the cross represents to other Christians, we choose to have no images before us during our worship services. On a weekly basis as part of our worship service, known as our sacrament meeting, it is common to see men, women, and children as young as three years of age preaching and praying from our pulpits. While our lay clergy pastor who was ordained a bishop or branch president presides at our meetings, he will only occasionally speak to the congregation. The bishop and branch president or their counselors conduct the meetings and invite individuals from the general membership to preach and pray on a weekly basis. This is one way members receive experience that helps them accept leadership positions as they are called upon. At this table, priests who are ordained at the age of 16 bless the emblems of the body and blood of Christ. These emblems are passed to the congregation by deacons who are ordained at the age of 12. This is the view from our pulpit. The accordion doors at the back of the chapel open to our cultural hall and additional seating when necessary. All are welcome to join us 
in our weekly worship services. As we proceed out the doors of the chapel, in this foyer, members can visit before and after meetings. Down this hallway on your left is the Bishop's Office for the Bloomfield Ward. Ward, W-A-R-D, is the name we use to identify our congregations. Our wards are organized geographically, and the Bloomfield Ward includes those who live in the town of Bloomfield and other surrounding towns. Further down this corridor, on the right and on the left, you will find classrooms for youth and children. Down this hallway, on the left, is the primary room where children from ages 3 to 12 meet as a group for singing, prayer, scripture reading, and sharing. Further down this hallway is the door to our baptismal font. Adult converts and children ages 8 and above are baptized here by full immersion. The age of eight is considered an age of accountability. Baptisms are performed with priests standing in waist deep water with the candidate for baptism who has accepted a covenant to follow Jesus Christ. The priest raises his right arm to the square and calling the individual by name says, quote, Having been commissioned of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. End quote. The individual then goes under the water and emerges out of the water, which action represents the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Confirmation of the gift of the Holy Ghost, making an individual an official member of the church is performed after the baptism of water and is done by the laying on of hands, a practice mentioned in the Bible. This is one of several doors that leads to our cultural hall. On the opposite side of the cultural hall, you will see large accordion doors that lead into the chapel. Opposite those accordion doors is a stage for performance and other cultural events. Going back out the same door, we enter and continue down this corridor. On the left is our nursery for children ages 18 months to three years. Down this corridor are additional classrooms and our Relief Society. The Latter-day Saint Relief Society is one of the oldest and largest women's organizations in the world. In this room, the women of the ward meet weekly Meetings are typically led by a president of the Relief Society and her two counselors. Faithful Latter-day Saints take seriously their commitment to home, family, and community. We are pragmatic in our work to build a better world. Self-improvement towards eternal life in the presence of God is at the heart of our efforts. Together with our theological teachings that give us purpose, weekly lessons for children, youth, and adults, help us to become better daughters and sons, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, better people, and better neighbors. We study the principled teachings from the words and examples of modern and ancient prophets and apostles, in particular, the words of Jesus Christ. Among other things, our lessons help us become a kinder, more loving, generous, honest, respectful, responsible, humble, faithful, forgiving, and patient people. Our bishops call others from the congregation to teach these lessons that the bishop himself attends. Just like other people who have a refugee history, culturally, Latter-day Saints have more than a passing interest in preparedness, self-reliance, and helping others. Continuing down this corridor opposite this small foyer, is our Family History Center that is open to the public during posted hours. Here, anyone can research their ancestry. Continuing down this corridor on the left are the young women's rooms. Meetings are conducted here by young women presidencies with adult leaders present. Young men and young women's organizations and classes are for youth ages 12 to 18. 
This is the door to the building's library. No mystery here. You'll find religious books, magazines, teachings aid, and other media. Moving forward, this is the Hartford Ward foyer. The Hartford Ward includes members from the city of Hartford and surrounding towns. Down this corridor on your right is the Bishop's Office to the Hartford Ward. Through this door are the stake offices where President William Elwell, his counselors, and the stake high council meet. They administer church affairs for the several wards and branches in the Hartford area. Back up to the other entrance of the chapel, this is a copy of the Real Book of Mormon. I suppose by now there may be an entire generation who think the Book of Mormon is just a Broadway play. But in reality, it's an actual book. To Latter-day Saints, the Book of Mormon is scripture that helps us better understand and emulate the attributes of God. The Book of Mormon begins with the words of Nephi, chapter one, verse one. I, Nephi, having been born of goodly parents, Therefore I was taught somewhat in all the learning of my father, and having seen many afflictions, in the course of my days nevertheless, having been highly favored of the Lord in all my days, yea, having had a great knowledge of the goodness and the mysteries of God, therefore I make a record of my proceedings in my days. Latter-day Saints accept both the Bible and the Book of Mormon as the Word of God. Thank you for spending your valuable time with me on this virtual tour. No doubt you have many questions. Perhaps you would like a copy of the Book of Mormon. You may be interested in the difference between meeting houses like this and the nearly 200 holy temples we have worldwide. With your questions, please refer to comeuntochrist.org or churchofjesuschrist.org. Many blessings to you and yours in 2021 and beyond.